everybody across the organization uses and should have a consistent version or a single version of the truth of. One of them is, um, you know, if I'm a client or a customer at Amazon, they should know my name, right? They should uh, consistently know my address. They should know, you know, um, some of the other preferences I have. And in most organizations, that's siloed. Um, one business unit has their own version of your name and address, another has their own, um, and then you update it in one, expecting it all to trans, you know, flow through the systems, and it doesn't. Um, and so master data management is a place where um, you can source information from multiple places, and then use intelligent logic to merge that into a single record, uh, which, you know, which becomes very valuable. And, it, and it's an area where I think um, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the, the most amount of innovation happening and, and one being just kind of starting out, I think they're probably like three, three and a half right now just because of um, some of the inbuilt build cognitive um, abilities that we're seeing from, um, from some of the larger vendors uh, out there and some of the smaller ones. So I would say MDM, um, if you want to have a conversation offline on, on what's out there, how to manage that, and how to um, you know, set yourself up for additional cognitive capabilities, I'm, I'm absolutely happy to have that conversation afterwards. Okay, um, there was a question in the back row there. John had his hand up. Me? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I think you had your hand up. Yeah, I did. You did. Um, when you were talking about social sourcing of knowledge about data, mm -hmm. I think you might have just answered this question a little bit, but what does that look like in an organizational context in, in terms of implementing, collecting all of the distributed knowledge about certain pieces of data? Yeah, so we, um, uh, you know, there are platforms out there that, that um, allow you to publish knowledge about data. They're called business glossaries, data glossaries, metadata repositories. There's all sorts of weird names for them. Um, but many of them, um, the traditional ones, are kind of built for uh, people intensive functions, meaning that you get the eight people in the room that um, are supposed to define what customer means. And you don't open the doors until they all agree or, you know, or they concede. Um, and then you publish that. And that becomes the standard definition of what customer means in the enterprise. You'd be surprised how many organizations can't agree on what customer means. Um, I mean, most of them, uh, it, they, they can't. So socially sourced looks like something like this. You still do a little bit, um, you know, you still lock people in a room and make sure they don't leave until they agree on a single definition. But then you allow others to put the mutations in, um, in terms of what they see and how they use it, right? Part of the challenge is that most companies will go out and define a single description. Um, for whatever, based on whatever uh, initial activity, and then that doesn't match business changes and new products come in, and that definition doesn't match uh, the reality anymore. And what social sourcing looks like is, if we've defined customer um, as somebody that's purchased a product from us, um, and, and somebody comes in and says, well, we start to define customer as somebody that's interested in a product, well, let's capture that. Right, so let's capture that through that social sourcing without going through that 10-person committee to agree on, uh, on it. Sir. Yes, sir. Question right at the front here. Getting folks into a room and, and locking the room might turn out very antisocial. Yes. Very quickly. <laughs> but I'm I, very popular. At I, I do have a suggestion. <laughs> I, I do have a suggestion on that note. Um, the company that I work for, they introduced a sort of a Facebook-like thing. Uh -huh. They used a, a thing called a hub. Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't want to be social outside the organization, yeah. but within the organization, they want to be, they want to be social. Yeah. So in an effort to uh, standardize nomenclature of terminologies that's used within the organization, they, they devised a, a glossary of terms. And whenever somebody gets that wrong, they are pointed at it and yeah. stuff like that. Um, the words are curated by uh, uh, by someone who manages the the, the, the various the and of so terms forth. and stuff yeah. like stuff like that. People can comment on a term, That's saying, right. "Hey, this is not entirely true." Here's an Correct. example, and so on and so forth. And then they redefine the term, and there's a date against it, so that you know oh, that was redefined as recent as of. So this is what social looks like. What right. this gentleman just described, right? And and I think. Um, 
they're, they're product companies that are getting closer to building that functionality into their glossaries and, and so forth. Um, and actually, I, there's one called Calibra that we leverage. Um, and I work with their product management to essentially be able to do just that. So now what we have a setup where people can come in and comment and say, yeah, this kind of works, but it doesn't work in this dimension. That doesn't mean we have to go change it immediately, but we have review of key terms on a regular basis. And when we do the next review, we take all of those comments into consideration. So you're absolutely right. Great. Let's take a final question here, Mark. So I want to go back a little bit to your, your comment about treating data as a significant asset on the balance sheet of any organization. Sure. Um, and to that, I'd like to add to that the notion of ERM, or enterprise risk, risk management. Mm -hmm. So with regard to governance of data, do you have any thoughts or any, any, any ideas or even any scenarios that you've heard of about how to manage the risk to a significant asset like that. And if I, if I might, I could give you a scenario that's running at the top of my mind. Please. Data is a primary product that someone uses, uh, that, that a corporation puts out into the, into the market. Someone misuses that, draws a false conclusion. It's easy to do, particularly if you misapply statistics, probability, and so forth. They announce their conclusion they, in, in their arena, their respected uh, party, but they made a mistake. Their humans are herd instinct animals and they start a herd instinct and suddenly support and all sorts of things in governance. I mean, government supports and funding drops out and so the corporation's uh, stock price drops as well. So I've seen this happen before. Do you have any thoughts, comments about that? So I spent, uh, um, I spent 18 years in the financial services industry. And, um, and since after 2007 and 2008, the crash, all we heard about was risk management related to data. And even on days we didn't want to hear it, a regulator would show up and, and, <laughs> and, and, and make us listen to that tape again. So very familiar with that, I think. Um, that's been, you know, if you kind of go back and unfold the 2008 crisis and the risk models associated with that, most banks thought they were just going to be fine. I mean, their data said so, and their risk model said so. Um, and what we found post-collapse was that in many cases their models were actually okay. It was their data that had bad quality or was being misinterpreted or they were taking a field to mean something that it wasn't designed to mean, um, and that's how they came to a lot of conclusions. Now, some of that might have been um, incentivized through, you know, through bonuses and, and other things, but um, but we do believe that a lot of that, um, you know, complexity came from lack of understanding of the data versus, um, you know, bad models. I, we thought. But the other thing I would say is that we at Kaiser Permanente think about that a lot. Right, because we're in the business of patient outcomes. Right, we ha yeah, sure, we have a health insurance business where we sell insurance, but we, of the 65 or $6 billion in revenue that we have, we spend 60 plus of that every year on patient care. Right, and uh, for us, a lot of the patient care is data driven. Right, so the impact of misunderstanding or mis, you know, um, queuing the data. Uh, has people impacts. Um, so we uh, associate data and the understanding with actually our enterprise risk management, uh, as you mentioned, both on the healthcare side as well as on the operation side. So to me, um, I think a lot, of, a lot of industries care about their data and, and the risk that it poses if it's not well understood or mis misrepresented. We really care about it because it, it impacts people's lives on a daily basis. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing your thoughts and experience this afternoon. Thank you.